Yeah. No, I, I just brought that up because I was literally just responding to that before the show. I know that's yeah, I saw that too. Um, Augustus Augustus McGiff, he's an 18 year old, um, is now starting to get playing time for Reading's U 23s. That is a big deal because he could still be playing for their younger teams. So him moving up and getting playing time, and people are like Augustus Augustus McGiff. That's an American. Yeah, yep, yep, it is. And in fact, one of our old good friends, I think it was Jeff Forbes, said, "You're just making players up now." Well, it's, like, it's good. It's good that he finally got out of Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. <laughs> but seriously, Augustus McGiff. That's like okay, you're taking a Scottish name and you're mixing it with a Roman name. And that's just weird, but I love it. It does sound, he sounds like he should be a movie star, you know, or have his own, I don't know, talk show. Augustus McGiff. Man, I wish I had that name when I was born. That is and a it, winner. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's nice to see, uh, you mentioned how he can still be playing for some of their, their younger squads. Uh, but it is nice to see there's, there's a larger, there's a growing number of, of U.S. youth players working their way up through the systems in Europe and finding themselves on the, uh, the older and older teams, you know, just before first team. Some of them cracking first team, but even then, it's, that number is growing, and that's a phenomenal thing to see. It is. In fact, some dude's father sent me photos of his son who plays goalkeeper for the U19 team, and they moved up, he moved up to a U23 or a U21 team in Germany. I'll have to look that up. He's not in the Chiefs U team yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, your turn. Sorry, I was looking at your uh, notes. <laughs> Put you on the so, spot, yeah. man. <laughs> so uh, look, looking over all the players who received playing time, who's scoring goals and assisting this week, and c- quite frankly, consistently week after week, uh, it's, it's nice to notice that most of our starting 11 for the U.S. national team are, are seeing consistent playing time or are returning to form. You know, in, the, in, in the sense of uh, Reina and Pulisic, you know, returning the form, you're seeing consistent playing time up and down the field. Like the only, the only, only position really not seeing consistent playing time is goalkeeper. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, Stefan was on the bench again mm-hmm. uh, for Man City this weekend, but yeah, everybody else. I mean, if Tyler Adams isn't injured, I think he plays more of that game. Pulisic, uh, McKenney scores a goal. Seconds I mean, every- after coming in too. Yeah. And it was really nice to see Gio Reyna get a start and play almost the whole game. I believe he played 90, but nevertheless, he had a great game and he had an assist and he was just solid. And I think he'll start the next game. Reyna played 79 minutes. Okay. 80 minutes. Yeah. I have him listed here as 80. I always round up. Um, (laughs) I do. I do. Um, And that's since Adams, Adams played 92. You know, we round up. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I don't round up that far. I gave Adams 50, 50 minutes. Um, so, and all this is a complicated thing that I have this system where I, I track production points for every player that plays abroad um, in the world that is an American. And I have a whole system for that. So I had to round it up. Otherwise, I the math got too complicated. So I started rounding everything up. You play 45, you get credit for playing 50. You play 43, you get credit for playing 40. So you get rounded down too. So um, Here's zero. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess it's my turn. I'm going to go with Alex Mighton. And the reason I'm bringing you up, because nobody brings him up. Absolutely nobody. I've been hearing I'm him not. a lot more and more throughout Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I see it on occasion, but it's not like something we felt, maybe because we're so spoiled up top and that, that top three you know, out with our forwards, but this kid is young. He's starting to play regularly and starting for a championship team, Nottingham at Nottingham Forest. And if we're going to pay attention to DK and we're going to play, pay attention to other players playing in the championship who are Americans, then we probably should pay attention to Alex Mighton. And he, there's probably no chance he's going to play for England. So I think we should probably uh, at least um, start paying attention if you're a u.s soccer fan i think you should because he's looking um let me just say this he's playing better than Dwayne holmes has been playing the last three games and we loved Dwayne holmes when he played for us um you know that 
those few brief times, those brief minutes. But um, Alex Mighton's another guy that fits into the category, but he's a little younger. So um, that's my note, um, and it's on to you. Yeah, my, my comment for my comment for that was I think some people may not necessarily pay attention because one, they may not know about him, but two, it's again, it's another dual national that may end up picking us may not who knows i don't so think maybe, maybe, any... maybe a number maybe a number of people don't pay maybe a number of people aren't paying attention for that many reason alone I, you know i may be wrong about this and so i'm going to confirm it but i you don't fake typing right there is that what that was you have, a, <laughs> you have it pulled up already don't you i do alex mighton was born in hartford connecticut but he is english um and he's only represented england so far from the U15s to the U19s. And uh, he's never played for the US. So, but he is eligible. And I'm going to tell you right now, he's not going to probably play for the English national team. So, should that mean we should stop paying attention to him because no. he's not good enough for the, the English national team? No, because then we wouldn't have paid attention to Yunus Musa. So, um, by the way, Eunice Musa not playing a whole lot, did get some minutes at the end of the game again for Valencia, I think 20 or 30 minutes. But, you know, um, yeah, we got to pay attention to everybody who's eligible. Absolutely. absolutely. And there, there were uh, – there was I, I couldn't tell you the players. Maybe I could. But, no, I'm not going to look it up. Uh, right. uh, there, there are a number of uh, young players that um, fit that bill where they're, they're dual nationals they played for uh, – the other country and most most u.s players most u.s fans haven't heard of them oh there, dude. there's definitely a select group of people who've heard a lot of them but the list is literally endless mm -hmm. of dual nationals that nobody talks about um i mean maybe they're specific people like tactical manager had keith perry on the show most people yeah. don't know who keith perry is he was one of the players I was, I was talking about there. But yeah. yeah, from a hole in the wall. Jan George, who's really only 28, has been like the star for Jan Regensburg this year in two Bundesliga. But he's probably considered too old to even consider at this point, which is ridiculous to me because he's still a great – he's playing some top-notch soccer right now. But, you know, I guess we're moving on. Maurice Malone, another guy from Van Wiesbaden, three Bundesliga, young kid, 19, I think – and having a great season for them. So, <clears throat> and listen, I'm just, that's the tip of the literal iceberg, okay? Because, I mean, I could get into uh, Jaboli Arayibi, who plays for Panathinaikos, Marcel Costley, who plays for Waldhof Mannheim. All these players are super young, and the list goes on forever and ever and ever. Seriously, that's why when people say, we don't have enough people playing in Europe, I'm like, Really? then why is my job so hard? Why do I have to track 342 American players playing overseas every week? God, I'd much rather it be 120. <laughs> <laughs> no, All right. I'll, yeah, I, I'll, uh, I'll reach back out to you about that afterwards, but yeah, I've got other things to talk about. Okay. All right. Your go. Um, so uh, it wasn't over the weekend, but it was earlier today. Richards pulled another 90 minutes with uh, – you know, so uh, my my question really is in this, we, we kind of talk about this a lot, but uh, as, as it appears that Berhalter is kind of set right now leading into the Gold Cup with Long and Brooks starting, how many how many more games does it take for for uh, Richards to finally crack that starting spot? You know, if uh, if Greg wasn't so solid on Aaron Long, then I think we'd see Richard sooner. But then even then, I think I think Burhalter doesn't want to rush Richards into that kind of responsibility is at his age. It's one thing to throw a young player out in the wing and say, go score goals, and they didn't score goals. No big deal. It's another thing to throw a very young center back on and have him make a huge mistake and get totally scored on and have that affect his psyche. So maybe he's just being tender with Richards. Um, that's all I can think of, honestly, because Hoffenheim's not being tender with Richards. 
no, they were, said, here's the deep end, go swim. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, we were the most scored on team practically in the top um, in the Bundesliga. And we've got to stop this from, we got to stop the leaking. So we're going to play a back three, three CBs, and mm-hmm. this young kid's going to be one of them. So um, they were kind of desperate too. Um, and I don't worked know. Worked out for but, them. Yeah, I don't think Greg feels desperate. I feel like, you know, we'll work Richards in slowly but surely, and we'll stick to the long thing. If we have to, we can do the Miazga thing. He's a bit older. Um, he can handle failure. I don't know. I, I can't get in Greg's mind. It's impossible at this point. Well, I mean, I, I feel like with the limited opportunities moving forward here, I think what we have one more uh, friendly window before Gold Cup. And right. uh, yeah, it's possible. Uh, it's possible. If it's, it's likely to be another Euro, uh, a Euro camp, it's likely Richards might get uh, the call in as far as the starting yeah. spot. Um, maybe, yeah. like you said, maybe he's going to work him in softly, but or yeah, who knows? Yeah. But Could be. I, I don't know. I think he's playing. I think he's kind of playing it safe. He knows what he gets with Long, and we are heading into the Gold Cup where we need to get a result, especially after the Olympic failure. A World Cup failure prior to that, and you know we just need to sort of start this off with this this very compact summer, and leading into the next year uh, with a high note. And I think that's yeah. I think that's what he's kind of hoping for. Yep, and there might be some splitting the difference going on as we head into a very busy schedule, mm-hmm. where he's like, well, you know, Tim Ream probably is not a starter for this, you know, for the qualifiers, but maybe I could throw him in for. Um, the gold cup and same thing with Richards. Maybe he's not a starter. Maybe I just go with long and, but I, I have got Richards for nation's league and, and gold cup. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, but there's going to have to be some splitting the difference here because we simply have too many games, too many tournaments and not everybody can play them all. And even, even looking at the windows, uh, the, the qualifying windows, we're, like, we, we talked about this before, but we're looking at three games each window except for one. So, I mean, yeah. it's going to be a very compact schedule. And will the same two center backs play all, you know, 270 minutes? Highly no possible. way. No way. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of work. And somebody's bound to get hurt. You know, you know how that is, too. 